Hi, and welcome to WOW Now. I'm Andrea James, and I'm delighted you're joining us today where we are going to be talking about The Bitch Who Stole Christmas. It's our new holiday movie here at World of Wonder, and joining us today to talk about it are the writers, Connor Wright and Christina Friel. Hi, and thanks for joining us. Hi. Hi, thanks for having us. Tell us a little bit about uh, how you got involved in enjoying Drag Race and how this opportunity came to you. Oh my God. Well, so we, we used to live in New York and um, I mean, back in the day, I don't know since COVID, but we would like every Thursday night go out to um, like the gay bars and watch it on screen. And it was like the first time it felt like I, it was the first time I, was I, under sport, yeah. Yeah, I understood like what sports feel like. Yeah. Like there was like that moment <laughs> where Sasha Valor like had the rose petals come out yes. and like everybody stood up and I was like, oh, this is the Super Bowl. Yeah. This is what people yeah. feel like when they watch the Super Bowl. Right. They put things into perspective for me. Had you uh, ever met or worked with RuPaul before this? No. No, this was no. our first time. It's it was like... also so funny like meeting RuPaul for the first time because it was in the middle of the town square and it was like 1 a.m. and he comes out in like these six inch heels and RuPaul's already like six four or something so he's like the seven foot woman like walking towards us being like hey yeah. <laughs> oh joining us today is the director extraordinaire Don Scardino thanks for joining us Don it's great Andrea it's great to see you it's great to be right here so can you tell us how you got involved in uh, this particular project you know I had met Fenton and Randy um, on a Zoom call about a project they were doing. If you look at where they started with Drag Race and where we are now today, I said, you know, you took a group that was very marginalized and you made it mainstream. And when you, when you take one marginalized group and make it okay, you do that for other marginalized groups as well. And, um, and they sent a script which made me laugh from page one. You've been dr bitten by the drag venom and you, you understand how much fun it can be. It's just the greatest. Somebody said to me, you know, well, what do you think about, you know, you come from this mainstream thing and working with these drag queens. And I said, these are performers. This is their act. This is their thing they do. It's like if you had someone who, play, who was famous for playing Hamlet. They're famous for doing this. Another reason why we were able to make this schedule and make it work is they all know their characters. They know who they are. Uh, and I would love to work with all of them again, uh, you know, in drag, out of drag, whatever. They're particularly my four queens. They were uh, extraordinary actors and extraordinary performers. And they brought it to life in a way that uh, is very special. What is your favorite cameo for each of you in the film? Oh my God, Kelly Mantle showing up for- <laughs> At the bus stop, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, that couldn't have picked a better person. <laughs> that part, I think that's also my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was just so funny. Or, or um, uh, La Ganja, like dropping through the yes, ceiling. Yes, death dropping through the yeah, ceiling. Yeah. Classic. <laughs> and then I mean, Kylie Soon coming in as Dolly Parton. Oh, also yeah. Also incredible. Yeah. I have to say, I was very impressed that you have Michelle Visage, Sharo, and Kim Petras in the same room at one point. <laughs> Yeah, that was our last day of filming and it felt like the perfect thing to We end. were so tired at that point and just like seeing three of them in the room, I was like, this feels like a dream I've had. Like, this feels like, it was already like 3 a.m. and we were like, I was like, what are these three people doing in this room? <laughs> it was great. Yeah, it was the best way to end it. <laughs> I mean, truly, every day something went wrong. Like, we, we were about to roll, we have huge crane, we have this big ball in the sky lighting the street, and we're doing this shot that I've talked about for several weeks that starts on the banner that says, welcome to Tuckahoe Christmas or whatever, comes down across the tree, finds our heroes, and away we go, and the bus pulls in, and it's all choreographed, and it's all great. And Fenton says, just we're about to roll, so anyone notice that the banner is spelled wrong? The banner, is, it says Tuckahoe, not Tuckahoe. It says tuck who? <laughs> and it was like, we all looked at, you know, we approved drawings, we approved fonts. It was like a, I said, get can somebody up there on a ladder or a genie lift, get a white brush and some paint, some white paint, and give me a script A between the two of them. Do it now, come on, go, go, go. Anyway, this was a terrific project with wonderful people, and we were gonna have the best time and make a terrific film, no matter what. Don, we're so delighted that you could join us today and, uh and hang out and uh, and share a little bit about how it all happened. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks, Andrea. Well, it's great that this has been a dream come true for both of you. It's certainly a dream come true for World of Wonder. Oh my God, Please. thank you. 
the bitch, bitch who stole Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> it's now available to watch on VH1. See you next time.